the first thing that we are going to look at today for fish in the news. Welcome to Fish in the News, by the way. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful intro that Ghost Boy adds to all of the Fish in the News is now. Is that a endangered fish, a fish that is protected in the nation that it is in, was cooked on live TV. Congratulations. A protected fish has been caught and cooked on live television in Austria. For over 35 years, the ORF magazine has been one of the most popular regional news programs in the country, the country being Austria. In addition to current topics and events, there's a recipe for viewers to cook every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, they put on a nice little thing. They tell you, you know, here's a recipe for you. You just use this thing and this thing and you make some delicious thing. However, this caused a stir in front of the screens last week. An innkeeper prepared meatballs with fish from the nearby Danube. The Danube being a river. I don't really know how to say that. There's a cool Danubian minnow in, in that river that I really like. However, what was sizzling in the pan in front of the cameras was an endangered specimen, the female nerfling, a European carp fish. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. What is a nerfling? Oh, an eyed. Okay. Eyed, I guess, are protected in Austria. What? Okay, thank you for the ad on GPUs. I did not know that eyed were protected in Austria. That is unfortunate is one of the strictly protected species in Austria and is on the red list all year round. Ah, there is no time. It may not be fished and certainly not offered for consumption. Numerous viewers recognized the woman's joke on the broadcast and were horrified. They contacted the station with complaints. Last week, we overcooked a delicious fish, the so-called Fraunerfling, but it is protected all year round and we apologize for that. They had different information about this. How the fish ended up in the television pan is still unclear. The only advice was to get a copy from a trusted fisherman. <laughs> so somebody at the news program was like, hey, I've got a great idea. I'll just go fish something out of the river and we'll cook it up and it will be absolutely delicious. And then they did it. And unfortunately it was an endangered fish. I don't think they're going to jail. Usually if you catch an endangered fish, you get a fine at worst. And that's if they catch you, which to be honest with you, they do not catch you as much as you would think that they catch you. Wriggling gold. Fishermen who catch baby eels for $2,000 a pan, hope for pan, pound, hope for many years of fishing. Look at this, baby eels. I was curious what they are. If these are anguilla, I could do this. <laughs> when are they gonna hire me? Do you know how many baby eels I've caught in my life? The freaking, um, what are those things called? What are baby eels called? Somebody in chat knows the answer because I can't think of it off the top of my head. The, um, um, uh, no, they're not eelets. Nope, it's not Jerry. Nope, not glass eels, but people do say that. No, not noodles. Evils, evils. Wait, you're so close, Volectoria. It's not evils, but it's so close. Elver, Elver. Thank you, Maurice, Elver. Anyways. I catch a ridiculous amount of elvers. If you like sort through seaweed along the coast at any time, really, you find ridiculous amounts of elvers. Baby eels are the most lucrative fishery in the United States on a per pound basis. I didn't know that. I didn't know anyone even bought baby eels. What are they doing with them? Baby eels, also called elvers, are likely the most valuable fish on a per pound basis, with orders of magnitude more money at the docks than lobsters, scallops, or salmon. They're vitally important to the world supply chain for Japanese food. Wait, people eat baby eels? The tiny fish, which only weigh a few grams, are harvested by fishermen using nets in rivers and streams. The only state in the significant in the country with a significant elver catch is Maine. I mean, we have a lot here. They should do it here. Interstate Regulatory Board controls the fishery, has released a plan to potentially keep the elver quota at 10,000 pounds a year. The eels are sold as seed stock to Asian aquaculture companies that raise them. Oh, okay, okay. They don't eat the babies. <laughs> it's not as bad as I thought. They don't eat the babies. They're not serving you the babies at Japanese restaurants. They go to aquaculture companies, which raise them, which then make them into food. Which makes sense. I mean, a, a bucket full of baby eels can end up as probably, what, thousands upon thousands of people's meals? 
Think about, because full-grown American eels are really big. Full-grown American eels can be like bigger than my wingspan, like bigger than I can show you on stream. So an individual baby could end up being multiple meals worth on its own. Why not save some adults then breed those? Because breeding eels is one of the most ridiculously difficult things in the world. We like didn't even know how eels bred for a long time or where they bred. So it's probably easier and more traditional to just catch a bunch of the babies and use that instead. It's never really been done. I think eels have been bred, some, but not Anguilla specifically. Are their populations stable even though humans catch a bunch of babies? Well, this is one of the reasons they're threatened. That's always one of the weird things. You look at iNaturalist and you look at, say, American eel, they're listed, I think, as endangered, even though they're one of the most abundant fishes posted on iNaturalist. Yeah, they're listed as endangered. But then look at their map. For an endangered fish, they are well reported. Wait for it. Yeah. For an endangered fish, they are extremely widespread, abundant, and well reported. Right? So it's like, I don't know, especially in this, like, my area, my god. Look at the amount of American eels. So, I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure they're listed as endangered because we are farming all of their babies. And probably just because they're threatened by dams and other things that block their passages up freshwater waterways. But population-wise, they don't seem to be particularly threatened. Thank you, Special Sock. But, like, protections and stuff like that, like the IUCN list, that can be done in advance. Like, predictory. Like, oh, hey, this fish is migratory, and we know that we're having a lot of issues with, like, dams. So we can list this fish to get it protections as a prediction that, like, hey, these things that humans are doing are going to affect it in the future. A fish doesn't have to, like, already be on the ropes, about to be gone for us to protect it which is a good thing. I like that precedent. Since booming in value, elvers have become the second most valuable fish species in Maine in terms of total value. Wait, I thought they were the most valuable in, oh, in terms of total value. Numerous new col controls to try to thwart poaching. Oh man, I was gonna go poaching. State awards a right to apply for an elver license via a lottery. And this year, more than 4,500 applicants applied for just 16 available licenses. Well, shit, man, I'll throw my hat in the ring. They're just saning up eels and giving them to Asian aquaculture raising places. I'll just I'll just do a random lottery. <laughs> Throw my name in there. One of one of these years I'll get it and I just yeah, I get to make like what? A couple hundred grand off of it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Unless the application has a fee, which it probably does, knowing everything government related. Ah well. Whoa.